Today, I am covering Mid Journey 101 as part of the AIR challenge for 30 days. Now, make sure to check out the whole series if you're interested in this video and others. We cover AIR essentials, like how to finally get those high resolution images, how to grow your Instagram account, and much more. So let's dive right in and go and talk about Mid Journey. So Mid Journey is one of the many solutions where you can generate art. A lot of the competitors are Dali, Stable Diffusion, and more. So for today, I am currently in the main page of Mid Journey. So Mid Journey is ran through a Discord account. And so they have different channels where they have announcements, statuses. Uh, there's a specific channels that are called specific rooms per se that are called newbies. As you can see here on the left side of the screen, there's newbies 40, newbies 10. And these are all just different threads where people generate their art publicly. That is, they do not pay for mid journey or they're okay generating art in public. So for example, this user here, Voxel, they have a toucan playing guitar, et cetera, et cetera. Now, I recommend, as the first tip of this video, I recommend that even if you pay for Mid Journey, as I do, every now and then still check the newbies channel from the main account of Mid Journey because you get to see what other people are using in their prompt. For example, this Voxel user that made the Tucan playing guitar, they use words like anamorphic, Lightroom, art station, film lighting. And these are all ideas that you can get for key terms that you could use for some of your prompts later on. Great. So this is the public side. Now, once you start paying for mid journey, I pay for the $30 a month plan. That one gets me everything that I need. And so we are going to run through a few of these prompts so you start to get a feel of what it is to use Mid Journey, the paid version. Okay, so now let's see how the text box for inputting messages and your prompt works for Mid Journey. So if you look all the way at the bottom, there is my cursor and there's a plus sign and then a bit of more icons on the right side. So the way that you figure out how that message box works is if you use the, the slash on your keyboard, all of these things pop up. So you have this, the frequently used, which is slash imagine. And if you hover over it, there's a, a word that comes up that says prompt. Then you have slash settings. And as you can see in the bottom, you have a few other options. You have slash ask to ask a question, blend. That's when you want to put multiple images together. Then you have fast mode and slow mode, which I will explain later. And then you have slash help. So for now, let's look at the slash imagine. So slash imagine is where you actually do all the prompting. That's what everyone is going crazy about. Like if you know a good prompt, you get a good picture. So for the purpose of this video and keeping it short, we're just going to type the word house and you can follow along as well in this video. So if you only put house, you will see that the images that come up are from many different styles. You will see that you also have no ownership of how that those images come out to be. And for now, as you can see, this is like how the buffering looks like for mid journey. And I just highlighted a word here in the middle of the screen that says relaxed. That means that you're in relax mode. And so as these images upload, there's a difference between fast mode and relax mode. Fast mode is for paid accounts. And depending on what plan you're on, you get a certain amount of hours of fast hours. And that just means that the buffering that we just saw happens faster, like the images upload faster. If you're in relax mode, even if you're in the paid account, it doesn't take away from depleting your account plan. Um, that is, you can do <laughs> unlimited amount of relax mode images 
and you don't spend over limit, etc. If you run out of fast hours, which I always do, <laughs> you have to pay extra per images after that. And so whenever I'm relaxed and you know I'm not in a hurry to put anything out on Instagram, I just use relax mode. Now for the purpose of this example, I will change it to fast mode. And the way that you do that is you go to slash settings. And so you can just type it out and then you click here. And then when you press enter, you're going to see a bunch of different options. So the first line here, the first row are which versions of mid journey do you want to use? So right now I have it a mid journey version four. If you're following along, which again, I recommend you do. Um, you should go ahead now and look at your settings and see which version of mid journey you're using because the older versions that you use, the, the worst, like the, the graphics and resolutions will be since it is kind of like when, you know, they have app releases or video game releases, you want to use the latest one in this case, mid journey four. The second row is about the quality specifically of that image. I have high quality two times the cost, I recommend you go for that one every time. And then for styling, which is the third row, you have style low, style medium, style high, etc. I recommend you use style low or style medium just because you want to have a little bit of more control. Um, in future videos, or you can play around with it later, if you do style very high, you do lose a lot of the details of an image. So again, I recommend you use style low. Then the last two, you have regular upscale, light upscale, and beta upscale. I will tell you right now, light upscale is most of the times no bueno. It is no good. You can try it out again and experiment with it, but for the purpose of this video and for the purpose of getting your settings, you know, copied from here, just put regular upscale. And then lastly, we have public mode, private mode, remix, fast mode, and relax. So let's break those down. Public mode versus private mode. You have to pay to have private mode. Now you're, you're probably wondering, but hello, you shared a public channel earlier. What do you mean there's a public mode here? So there's a difference between using the threads in the main channel that set newbies, newbies 40, newbies 70. That means that everyone can see your images at all times. Being in public mode with direct messages to mid journey bot means that mid journey can see them. And in a gallery that I'll show you later, other people can figure out a way of finding your images. Great. In private mode, no one can see it. It's just you. It's usually a very expensive plan. It's mostly for companies. Then remix mode. I'll go into it right after this. And then fast mode and relaxed mode is what I had just explained already. So remix mode means that when, and we're going to do this soon, when you try to redo one of these images, like regenerate one of these images, you have the ability to edit the prompt before it regenerates. If you don't have remix mode on, it just tries again without any input from you. Okay. So let's go to the images that we got. So mid journey always gives you four images per prompt. So right now we have four different types of houses. We have one that apparently is in Mars. Then we have a very beat up house and they're all different colors, different cinematic backgrounds. There's nothing tying them together. And so to gen to see one of them bigger, you just click on the U, so U1, U2, U3, U4. They match the images that you see. So U1 is the top left, U2 is the top right, U3 is the bottom left, U4 is the bottom right. So I'm going to put U4 for now. And that just means that that top, uh, sorry, that bottom left, um, that bottom right <laughs> is going to go into a bigger, bigger scale. That ex exact same image. Now, the ones that you see in the bottom is V1, V2, V3, V4. 
Again, the numbers correspond the quadrant section. And, and then the V means that you want a version of that image, but not the exact same image. So we're going to put V4. And then you have this remix pop up. This only works if you have the remix mode under the settings. So for remix, I'm going to put now Octane Render. And little by little, you're going to figure out like the different key terms that you can use. But this means that I was able to go from one image, edit my prompt, and then move on and continue through that, as opposed to, again, just generating it by itself. The last thing I will show you in for now is if you go to slash imagine prompt, you can like knock yourself out, guys. You can put house, floral, um, daylight sky with a uh, sunlit background, and you can put something like uh, pink house, or let's put greenhouse. Um, you can put Photoshop, and let's put 20K for resolution and epic shop. These are just random words for now, but later on when you look at the Notion template that we're going to share with you guys after this video, look through the Notion because there's a section that is all for key terms. And I break down some of these key terms. And again, I encourage you to look at other people's prompts in the public channel to figure out what key terms they're using. So that is that for now. This is the way that you can navigate prompting with Midjourney. Um, as you can see, I'm still in the relaxed mode. So images are taking a little bit longer, but alrighty, so they just finished. So if you look at right here, this one, that's the image four that I told you that now we have in a bigger scale. And then if you look up here, this is the remix that we made. So our first prompt had orange and gray. Our second one, after we did the remix, they're all gray. So that's what it means when you do a version of, a, of an image. Now, in that last prompt that we did, we put greenhouse, floral, daylight, sky, you know, Photoshop, epic shot. These are completely different from the prompt that just said house. Right now, we have a gorgeous greenhouse I don't know about you guys, but my favorite right now is U4. So what's U4 again? Think about it. Yes, it is the bottom right image. And because I put Octane Render, it does look like someone who would have used Octane instead of you know Photoshop or Sketch or anything else, like drawing, pencil drawing, etc. Okay, so I will stop here for the mid-journey Discord. The last thing I wanted to leave you guys off is that Midjourney has actually a different, um, I guess, website to interact with. So if you go to midjourney.com slash app, there is a, an option to land in this page. And so this page has a collection of all the prompts you've ever run, and it shows it to you in a gallery mode. So right here, if you wanted to look at images in the Discord, you have to scroll up and down and then have the prompts mixed with the images. But if you just go here to your profile, you have only the images. If you see an image and you're really wondering like, oh, wow, I forgot what prompt I used for this. You just go to the image, you click on it. And then here at the bottom, it tells you the prompt that you used the version that landed for that, the dimension, the time, and if you did it in fast mode or relaxed mode. And more importantly, it shows you the parent. So the parents are usually like really helpful because if you want to go back to the parent and then do a different like redirection from it, then you can do that. Okay. So the other thing I wanted to show you is that in this same page, you have the home page, community feed, personal feed, bookmarks. The community feed is other people's work. Um, so right here, for example, if I zoom in, if I really like this person's art, I can see that they used in their prompt high resolution photography. 
This other person used, let's see, hyper detail, ultra realistic. So you can start getting ideas of like what key terms you could use for yourself. And then Mid Journey has a showcase page. And I'll leave all these links in the description where, again, you can see like some of what they call their best artwork, artwork public. And you can see, again, some of the words that they're using. The last thing is in your profile, you do have collections. Um, if you want to not just look at a laundry list of, you know, your gallery with a bunch of images, you can section them out. And the way that you do that is you go on a picture and then you have these different options. You have the three dots and that's to copy the command, the prompt. You can open in a new tab or you can save the image to your, to your, to your computer. If you put add collection, then you can start figuring out which collection you want to put it in, if it's a new collection or not. Okay, I will leave you there. That was Mid Journey 101. I know it was a lot, but it's also really fun. So if you need to rewatch this video, go ahead, pause and follow along. And again, look at the Notion, that Notion site that we'll have in the description. Uh, we are running this for 30 days, so don't forget to like and subscribe and follow along the 30 days of AI art. Bye, guys.